What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona and we're just outside of the city in San Cugat del Valles. You can see the train station right behind me and this is one of the places just outside of the city that's a really nice day trip. You can do it in really even just half a day and what we're going to do is we're going to take a walk from the train station right here down through the main, the center road and getting down to the monastery that they have which is always worth a visit, worth checking it out. And why we're doing this video today is because of some friends of the channel, Pete and Rosie, have asked to see a little bit more of this town, which is, like I said, just on the other side of the mountains, the Cosarola Mountains that surround Barcelona. They wanted to get a little bit of an idea of it for a possible move here. So if anybody else has questions about places in or outside of Barcelona, you can always let me know and I'll try my best to show you around. San Cugat, I have a little bit of an advantage because I actually live here as well. Love this town. It's one of the nicest in the entire country. And like I said, we're just outside of the train station and it's only a 25 minute ride from Barcelona. You get on the ferrocarrils and what you do is from Plaza Catalunya, very center of Barcelona, in just 25 minutes, you've got multiple trains that are coming out here at all times. And realistically, it's only about every, every six minutes you've got a train that comes out here. So it's really easy to get to. And like I said, a nice day trip. You can come out here uh, for the morning, get over to the monastery, see that. And then I'll show you some different bars, different restaurants and cafes that you can get to as well. So let's get started. All right, so when you get out of the train station, you've got the main plaza. Uh, right here, a lot of things are closed down, uh, but you've got a couple bars out here. This one right over here, Catalonia, I've always really, really liked, but it's been closed with the COVID measures right now. Some other ones all around as well, but this is the main road you're going to head down over towards the, towards the monastery. And if you come to San Cugat, like I said, that is probably the big thing that you want to see. It's about a thousand year old monastery that when we get down there, you'll see what it's all about. Really, really nice. And one of the first stops that if you do come over for a day trip, if you're coming over in the morning, or just really whenever, we've got a really nice bakery right here, Serra Jordia, which is awesome for coffees. They give you a nice little muffin uh, with that coffee. And they've got all sorts of really good bread, some nice sandwiches. They do some good juice, all sorts of different things. So if you want a nice little uh, breakfast, even a brunch, lunch, whatever, that place right here is a must go to. And they've got some nice seating on the outside for you as well. So remember that one, Serra Jordia, or Jordia, I should say. I'm gonna walk on down through the main, the main roads right here. It's a bunch of other little, obviously, streets to go off of. And San Cugat's really big now, it's about, I want to say around 90,000 people that live here and it covers quite an extensive extensive area but this main road is obviously if you're coming over what you would see other options and what a lot of people actually do are got some construction a lot of noise one of the things that a lot of people do is they actually take a walk or you can take a hike through the mountains. Oh, got a lot of construction going on over here. See all that. A lot of noise. So like I was saying, a lot of people will take a walk from Barcelona over the Cosarola Mountains, maybe even through Tibidabo, and they'll come into San Cugat on that route through the mountains and there's actually some restaurants out over there that a lot of people will have a nice Catalan lunch big three course meals and go on for a long time for a couple hours and they'll do that and then they'll come into San Cugat which is about I don't know you have maybe a, about a mile before you get into the center from some of those restaurants and then they'll take the train back in to the city so like I said it, I don't know it's about 13 kilometers walking uh, but again, 25 minutes in the train, so it's always really nice. We're going to jump off the main road right now, and I'll show you this other place. This is somewhere. It's a nice little brunch place as well. Uh, it's changed quite a bit from when it opened up a couple years back. 
It originally had a bunch of kind of those Belgian beers and everything, but now they offer all sorts, all sorts of different things. Uh, and if you're looking for like pancakes, bagels, any of those types of things, they've also got a really nice lunch menu, but you can see the patio they have out here. So you've got Serra Jordia, and you've got somewhere just as you're walking in are two spots that you might want to stop if you're coming out here. Two options, two great options that you can always check out. And now we're going to continue on down the main road and you can kind of get an idea of the center of the town. But there's, a, there's actually quite a few expats out here as well. Right before the elections for the president in the States, uh, they had an interview and they were talking about the amount of Americans that are here. So you do hear quite a bit of, quite a bit of English. Uh, I actually just met a lady in the, in the plaza who uh, was a, another English speaker out here. But they said there's about 500 Americans living in San Cugat, which I don't know, surprised me that number there. But you see a lot of expats here. Like I said before, it's a really nice, really nice city, really nice community out here. And a couple years ago, it was the second most expensive city in all of Spain, right behind San Sebastian. But San Sebastian more because of the little space that it actually has. Um, that's why those prices go up. But here overall, San Cugat is, is pretty expensive. Obviously, Barcelona is just so big that it depends on the areas. And areas like Sarria, if you haven't seen that video, you can check that one out as well that I did a couple months ago. Um, Sarria would be more expensive than a, than a San Cugat. But as a city in itself, San Cugat's up there. I don't know if you can see this building, but I always like looking up and checking it out. You've got like the zodiac signs on the building there. So there's some that you need to look around and see just by somewhere off on one of the other streets, there's an entire house that its facade is covered in seashells. So there's all sorts of different interesting, interesting places. Another bar just right here is always a really nice one, more kind of like a little local bar. Maybe nothing too special. They do some really nice sandwiches, um, but a really nice, really nice bar to sit out at. When they first started opening up in the quarantine, first time we could actually go out, that's a place where I would grab some coffees. And now we're heading on to more of the stretch with all the different shops. So you'll see behind me as we're walking through, all kind of like the local shops and you can even see in San Cugat they've got the commerce right here so this is kind of supporting all these local businesses they've even got a special card that you can use at all of these different places but this in the afternoon evening and even on those Saturday and Sunday afternoons this road is just packed with people everybody kind of out walking with their families or anything especially on those Sunday afternoons. And you can see now all the shops are open. We've had a couple weeks now where shops can be open. And it's not just weekdays anymore. Right now it's even on to the, to the weekend, so Saturday as well. Petrichol, another little chain bar there. Just like the street in Barcelona. If you're looking for ice cream in San Cugat, Juan Pros, right there is really, really good. It's kind of like a San Cugat staple where you can go over. all sorts of action right it's it's a very like I said there are some expats and things but it is also a very local kind of native town as well so you can see everybody walking through
And I think that's one of the big things, right? Just the proximity to Barcelona where you can still live close enough to be in there every single day, but still kind of have that tranquility, that calmness around here as well. I'm just waiting at the light, which show you an idea. We've got the, now it's green, which you can see. Um, while we were waiting, they actually have lights at your feet that will turn red. So when, and I have always loved this, but when people are walking and they're looking at their phone, they're looking down the entire time, you'll see those red lights and you'll notice stop, that it's not just red at the top, but you'll notice that as well. And then I wanna give another shout out to another restaurant right here that you can see right when you cross the street, you've got the tables outside La Barra. All right now, if you go there, they've got some great pinchos, they've got some really nice food, some tapas and everything. But what you do when you go there, what you get is the cheesecake. And the cheesecake is really, really good. It's kind of like a destruction of a cheesecake. So it's not in that form. It kind of just looks like mush, but it is really good. It's called Martin's Cheesecake. And every time we go there, that is what we go for. Right? Nice dinners, but a really, really good dessert. La Barra. There's also one in Barcelona. And after we cross that stoplight, we've got the second set of all the different shops as well. So you can see those as we're walking through. All sorts of nice little boutiques and things. One of the big kind of problems that's happened here is that a lot of these rents, the rent prices at these places have gone up a lot. So there's been a lot of movement in the last couple of years because this main road is obviously prime real estate to have your shop. You can see some that have been here forever and then a lot of things that have kind of gone and changed. I'll get across over here. This building is being changed up right here, but you can see kind of a typical older building right across the way. smaller shops right back there. And we're actually getting closer to Plaza Octavia, which is where that monastery is. And they have some other, some other bars just right here. This one's actually really new, put in I think just before the pandemic, Gina. And that place has changed all sorts of times. And then you've got Rusignol, actually on the street Rusignol, and that bar is kind of like a staple. I've got a nice deal on patatas bravas and cañas, so smaller beers. And if you're looking for pastries or any sorts of um, kind of croissants and different things, you've got Sabat right here. You can see they're set up for Easter right now with those the special Easter decorations out and the monas which are the kind of like Easter cakes there's a tradition here that the godfather will always give their godchildren these, these, these monas which are these really decorative cakes throughout and so now we're getting into the main plaza here and this is one where you'll see a lot of different restaurants and bars out and a lot of people will come to and this is where everybody is during those weekends. But I just wanted to show you really quickly. You can see there's a museum right back here, Cal Gerre. This is apparently the only museum in Europe, or at least the first museum in Europe, that's dedicated to Marilyn Monroe. That one's been open for a couple, uh, a couple years now. And so now right in the middle of this plaza, you've got some spots for some different bars, different restaurants. My personal recommendation, my personal recommendation, if you're coming over to San Cugat, getting over to the monastery, is you wanna to go to my favorite restaurant 
in the city. That's El Maison, all right? Uh, love that place. Celebrated birthdays there, all sorts of different lunches, dinners, anything. If I can ever get over there, I always go. Great terrace, great spot right there. Their patatas bravas are absolutely incredible, and their list of tapas are really, really nice, all right? And then I want to show you guys now. I've kind of been hiding it a little bit, but I want to show you the monastery so we get it into focus right there. You can see about a thousand years old. And San Cugat historically was really, really important because of this monastery, Dominican monastery right here. We'll get in, we'll get a little bit closer, but it's kind of walled off in this area. You can still get into the church, go to mass and everything. So it's an incredible place to go to mass. And so if you do that trip, like I said, this is where you're gonna wanna come over and this is what you're going to want to visit. There's the main entrance to get into the church right there. And then just around the corner, what you have is the ability to go into uh, the museum. And you can see the cloister and they have an entire museum that explains the history, not only of San Cugat, but of the monastery in itself. And you can even see right here, they've got a bunch of different signs that tell you a little bit more about that history but you can see that rose window that beautiful rose window which is later going to be used to make the rose window in santa maria del mar in barcelona but beautiful beautiful just outside interior um, and outside getting into the interior really nice as well and i want to get over to this spot here so we can see a little bit more of the tower and i'll put together an entire video and for another day, all about the inside and what you can actually see in there. But you've got the tower, which is always really special. And I think it was 2017 now, four, maybe even five years ago, we actually did a thing for the, I play basketball in San Cugat as well. We did a special thing where we were up at the top of that tower there, and we put a basketball hoop down here, and they let us shoot baskets into, uh, into the hoop. I didn't make any of them, but it was a pretty cool experience to be able to shoot off uh, you know, baskets from, a, from an 11th century tower, basically, all right? So like I said, I'll do a more special video onto the interior, into that museum, talk all about it and everything, and I'll even probably have to do one about El Maison, kind of give you an idea for a day trip, but hopefully this gave you an idea of some of the things that you can see, an idea of the town as well. Like I said before, if you're looking for other places inside of Barcelona, outside as well, shoot me a message, leave me a comment or anything of other places that you'd like to see. And in the meantime, check out some of those other videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.